Yo, what's good guys? This is Theo here, and in this video I'm going to go ahead and explain to you um, a bunch of technologies or hot technologies in 2017, uh, what all of them are used for, and for that I have this front-end developer handbook open on Gitbook, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. Quick read here. Uh, so this is a really good link. I'm going to leave the link in the description. And really, this goes through everything from getting a job, becoming a front-end developer. I, I would say this is more full stack than just front-end, but again, it's called front-end. Um, and, and I've been going through some of this, right? So it has self-directed learning, um, DNS, HTTP, then JavaScript. This has a ton of good resources in here. Um, learning the DOM, the BOM, browser object model, jQuery, uh, JSON, JS templates. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and explain here, um, let me see if I can pull up, um, let's see where I can find it, it is in the progressive web app, I think, uh, no, it's not, it is in, where is it, Java front end development, um, let me grab it, it is front end app architecture. So like he lists these different charts out here, 2016 front end tooling. So I'm gonna go over what each of these are because maybe everyone's not familiar with it. So let's look at these and I'm gonna explain to you guys. Um, so we're not looking at that. We're gonna look at, we're just gonna go to JavaScript. So we're gonna go down a little bit more. Let's see if I can find this. Okay, so, so first thing is task runners. Let's go over these. So personally, I don't use Gulp or Grunt, and I feel like I've heard of Make, I haven't used it, um, but then there's NPM scripts, and NPM scripts are basically, if you were to, uh, right, just touch a package.json and vim into there, or open that up, right, and you have your package.json, right, and then you have a property uh, called scripts in here, and that is an object in and of itself, and inside of here, you can put scripts, right? Like you can put a build script, and this could just be you know Webpack with production mode on, right? And I'm gonna explain Webpack, but basically then you could uh, exit out of here, and then you could run, you know, npm run followed by the name of your script, which is build, right? And obviously it's not gonna work because it doesn't really understand that at that point, but so that's an npm script. Uh, Grunt and Gulp are task runners, and basically you can use these to um, you know, either minify your code um, to take your SAS and make it into regular CSS, etc. Um, so again, we can sort of see Gulp and NPM scripts are the most popular. I personally am more into NPM scripts. I don't like the whole configuration of Gulp and Grunt. And again, it's just more bloat in terms of syntax and learning another language. Uh, so next up, libraries and frameworks. Let's try and explain all of these. jQuery is um, a basic uh, JavaScript library. It's just a wrapper. And, you know, again, good example of it is, right, in JavaScript, if you were to select an element, right, and you say var element, you would say document dot get element by ID, something like that, right? And then you'd pass in, you know, ID. And, but someone with jQuery, you can just say, use this dollar sign, which is the jQuery global and behind the scenes. It's gonna do something similar to this, right? But with more validation. And then you can just pass in the name of the ID like that. So, all right, so that's jQuery. I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of it. Underscore, underscore, and Lodash are like uh, utility libraries. So, you know, a common method um, could be something like, you know, you have an array of users, right? And we go into node, and we have, or we'll just say numbers, right? And uh, we got one, two, three, four. Four, and what I want to do is I want to extract the unique numbers, right? So using something like underscore lodash, I could do var unique equals, you know, something like, I don't know the exact syntax, right? But it would be like unique numbers, right? And then I would get back, um, you know, one, two, three, four, and not the extra four. Um, I've never personally used Backbone, so I'm not going to talk about it, but uh, Backbone is a, another uh, sort of uh, view uh, model uh, library that you can use to build uh, applications. Angular 1, I have a good amount of experience with that. This is more like an MVC. It comes with a lot of built-in directives, built-in helper methods. Um, this really is the full package. 
Whereas Angular 2 is more component based, it's still an MVC, but it has a lot more tooling required. You know, you have your TypeScript, you have also, uh, you're gonna need system, JS, or another module loader. Uh, so you got a lot more configuration going on, whereas Angular 1, you really can just drop in the script for the Angular file and then for a router maybe, and you're good to go. Ember, um, Ember is another uh, MVC front end framework I don't have experience with, and I don't, I personally don't see it, you know, picking up in popularity, but, um, you know, I heard a lot of people like it because there's a lot less configuration compared to um, Angular or Angular 2. React is um, basically just a view uh, for building out UIs and components, and everything in React is a component, so I really like that. Uh, Polymer is a wrapper that allows you to build web components, and when I say web component, I mean literally building out your own custom HTML tag that might be like, you know, store, and it will work in the browser. Um, the good thing about web components is that you are not, uh, you are no longer, you know, forced to have a certain reliance on a framework. Um, likely in the future, uh, even without Polymer, you will be able to just build web components in the work uh, native to the browser. Um, I've heard of Aurelia, I haven't used it. No, it's another front-end framework. Vue.js is a framework very similar to Angular, I would say, except for it's a lot lighter weight. And this one is gaining a ton of popularity. I, um, last time I looked on Patreon, the guy making it is up to about $10,000 a month off of it. Uh, Meteor.js is another front-end fr framework built by uh, engineers at MIT. Supposedly, it's also really fast, um, but I haven't used it. Knockout, I feel like this is like 2009, 2010 stuff. Um, I've never used it too, and it doesn't seem like it's really gonna, uh, I don't know, I've, I haven't heard of anyone using it as of late. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Which JavaScript libraries do you currently use most? We went over all of these. Cool, uh, let's look at what else. Query, all right, module bundlers. Okay, so let's look at these. Require JS. Um, this is a common module um, bund bundler that, again, anytime you see the require keyword, what that will do is it'll look in your directory, return to you an object. Uh, Browserify. Uh, Browserify is similar to uh, Webpack in that it is basically going to load in all of your dependencies if you set it up. But I would say Webpack is probably the most powerful, the one that I enjoy using the most. Um, and the reason for that is because you can configure the webpack.config.js to do everything. You have the concept of loaders and, um, so loaders and plugins and loaders are basically say you need to convert your ES6 to ES5. So you could use what's called a Babel loader and then you have style loaders and you can do sort of live CSS where you can import your CSS into your JavaScript file and uh, you can get that sort of live, um, not module replacement, but live CSS changes, so you don't have to keep refreshing. Um, cool, and I haven't used Rollup, and I've heard of JSPM, but I haven't used that either. Okay, so let's keep looking. Transpilers, okay, and linting, okay. I've used ESLint, you can use JSLint, ESLint, it's just again going more towards ES Future, or ES6, or ES7. These are really great because all you have to do is configure an ES Lint um, RC file and then you give it some rules. You could use other people's style guys like Airbnb or uh, you know Google, whatever. And then your Linter, Sublime, Visual Studio Code, whatever, basically tell you about these errors. Um, other ones you know, might be standard. And a lot of these have a dash dash fix flag in there. So what it will do is it can actually go ahead and try and change your code, you know, on save. So you could have a um, function in ES5, and if you have your ESLint configure that you want it to try and fix it to ES6, it will actually go ahead and take those functions and replace them with error functions and so on. So JavaScript testing, um, these are all different uh, testing frameworks and runners. Mocha, again, is going to be a test runner, whereas Jasmine is a test framework. I never used tape and I haven't heard of that to be honest. Um, or Ava. Q unit, I'm pretty sure that's native to um I want to say it's native to jQuery. 
Uh, I might be wrong though. I think it's created by the same people that made jQuery. Uh, I haven't, I've used that like once or twice. Didn't think it's very good. I'm currently using Jest. Uh, it's very popular with React and Redux. And again, it's very simple. It already comes with the describe and the tests. And then you also have your before all, before each, after all, after each. So that's really good. And you can sort of look at here. Jasmine and Mocha seem to be the most popular. And Jest is picking up some framework. But you can look. It's, it's kind of curious. A lot of people, about half. I don't do any testing at my work. I've been getting more into it just for fun, but um, looks like, yeah, about half of people do not test at all. Um, so miscellaneous tools, you can go over some of these. Bower, package manager. I personally don't think anyone's using Bower that much in 2017. I think it's all about NPM and Yarn. The difference between Yarn and NPM, Yarn is uh, what's called deterministic, and that means what it will do is it will cache um, all of your modules when you download them. So not only will you get a faster download um, time because the modules are cached, but you're always going to get the same uh, module every time. Babel is uh, a transpiler, and what it will do is it will take your uh, ES6 or ES7 code and compile it down to ES5. Yeoman is a scaffold generator, so you can download Yeoman and you can you know set it up so you want it to work with Angular, and you can do something like Yeoman. Um, dash controller whatever and it'll generate a controller file for you typescript is a subset of javascript that allows you to have a strongly typed javascript have interfaces classes etc cool and yeah guys so i just wanted to go over some of these uh, tools with you um I'd say the few that we left out would be redux redux is a state management system that uh, basically says that you should have all the state of your application in a single store, which is basically just a JavaScript object. And the only way to mutate or to make changes to this store is using what's called um, action creators and reducers. Um, so basically you have this data flow that is all centralized in the nucleus of a store. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll leave the links to these two in the description. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.